Hello friends and welcome to today's project of making pomelo marmalade. The full recipe for this is in the description. Since I'm from Malaysia, I grew up eating pomelo, so I thought I'd try and make something with pomelo. I also like jams and marmalades, so you can understand why I need to make pomelo marmalade. Pomelos taste almost like grapefruit, but have a more delicate and floral taste. The ones I am using here today are the honey pomelo variety. I managed to come across this at my local green grocery shop. These ones here aren't pricey, so I bought a couple. Just to show you a size comparison, here is the fruit and my hand. This one comes from China. First, let's prepare the pomelo. Here, I have a serrated knife. We are going to peel the fruit. It is very simple to do. My advice is to keep the knife steady and to turn the fruit and the knife at the same time. Make an insertion in the skin about 1 to 2 centimeters deep because the albedo is rather thick compared to an orange or lemon. Here is some fruit anatomy. What is the albedo? The albedo is the white part of a citrus fruit. Cut around the pomelo and make another cut around. Time to peel. Try and get your thumb in. Once you're able to get your thumb in, peeling becomes easy. Just run your thumb or finger along the fruit and there you have it. One of four pieces. The white part is so thick it feels like marshmallow. Once you have your naked fruit, you can go ahead and break it down the middle. Look at this gorgeous pomelo segment, or juice vesicles, or also known as citrus kernels. Have a taste. Just simply refreshing. I have three pomelos, so we're going to have to take it apart. Make sure there are no white parts. It will take some time, so play some of your favorite music and start peeling. We need to do this because the white part is rather bitter. Once that is done, set that aside for later. Now we're going to go ahead and prepare the skin. Take your knife. I find it easier to do it with a serrated knife. Cut it in half. And we are going to take away as much of the albedo as we can. We just want the peel. Run your knife as close to the board as possible, but be careful when doing this. My trick to doing this is to cut from one side to the other side. And when I have reached more than halfway, is to change how I'm holding it. This is in case there is a slip. This helps me in not cutting myself. My suggestion is to first do this on all the skin. Once you have done that, we can process the skin further by cutting it into strips or batons. When making marmalade or eating it, I like when it's thick cut because I really want to taste and feel the peel when I have it on some bread or scones. There you go, all done. The next step is important. Take a pot and boil some water. We're going to blanch the peel for two minutes at a time. Only start the timer once it comes to a rolling boil. We need to do this three times. Yes, you heard me, three times. And every time we do it, we have to do it with fresh, new boiling water. This ensures that the peel becomes soft and the bitterness is reduced. This is a method I picked up from working in the industry and from Jacques Papin, who is a French celebrity chef. This method takes time, but it works. You might be wondering why not just boil it for longer in the same water, but then the same bitterness is in the same pot. If you want to speed this process up, just keep a boiling kettle on the standby with some hot water in it. It will be much faster. Strain it and then back again until you reach three times. Once you have done that, we are going to weigh the peel. This ratio works in any amount. The total weight of the peel came to about 300 grams. Now I need to weigh out 50% of the total weight in sugar, which will be 150 grams. In traditional jam or marmalade making, 50% sugar is ideal to preserve the jam or marmalade to allow it to set. 
You can of course use less sugar and perhaps a setting agent such as pectin powder. You can watch my other videos on how I use pectin powder and let that sit on the side for later. Now we're going to take care of the other stuff. Take a food processor or blender, pour the fruit in and give it a blend. We do this to break it down. Blending helps to disperse the natural pectin found in the fruit segment. Man oh man, some of this with ice and soda water and you got yourself a refreshing drink right there. You could even add some gin. We are going to do a first strain. This will ensure all the major pulp is taken away as well as the tiny seeds. We don't want this in our marmalade. We want the marmalade to be of pure juice and peel. Now for the second strain. This is important because a clear liquid or pomelo juice will give you a shiny finish when making marmalade. You will see what I mean later. Here I have some muslin cloth. You can also use a cheesecloth. It is super fine and will ensure there is no excess pulp making the marmalade cloudy. Take your muslin cloth and place it over a bowl. Pour in the first strained juice, wrap it up and squeeze. Pour the juice into a medium sized pot. The juice itself is almost clear. What you are seeing is just the color of the juice. Now we will have to weigh out the liquid. I managed to get about 750 grams of juice. So following the rule of 50% here, we will need 375 grams of sugar. Take the pot to the stove and turn the heat on to medium to high. Let it boil. Once the sugar has dissolved, Pour in the blanched pomelo peel. Keep an eye on it and stirring occasionally. What we are aiming is the temperature to reach about 106 degrees Celsius. We are currently at about 100 degrees Celsius here. The reason we want the temperature to reach 106 degrees is as the water evaporates and the sugar starts to thicken up, the temperature will guide you for the consistency later. After some time, the juice has reduced to about half and the color has changed to a nice subtle orange. Take a reading. There you go, it has reached 106 degrees Celsius. If you want a looser marmalade, take your temperature down. If you want a thicker marmalade, bring it up to about 108 degrees. Now, I have seen some videos where you take the marmalade and do a plate test by placing some and waiting to see if it sets. I have just sped up the process by taking a frozen spoon and trying the finger test to see the consistency. Run your finger making a line and note how the marmalade stays in place. Because I'm using a frozen spoon, it sets almost immediately on the spoon. It is done. Take it off the heat. Take a measuring scale and place the marmalade in a bowl. I am doing this because as we are using honey pomelo, I want to help with the honey flavor. I want it to pop. So here I'm adding 10% honey to the weight of the marmalade. The total weight came out to about 820 grams. So I need 82 grams of honey. Mix it in. I mean, this marmalade looks pretty sexy already. The marmalade looks shiny. Let's do one final spoon test just to check after adding the honey as well. There you go, still a line. Pour the marmalade into a glass container. Place some cling film over the top to avoid a skin from forming. Place it in the fridge to set and come back after 8 hours or overnight is best. In the meantime, while waiting, do check out my other videos on jams. After 24 hours, take it out from the fridge. I want to show you guys something. I want to show you how clear the jam is. Look at that. The light above shines through and you can see the individual peel pieces. All we have to do now is peel back the clean film. I can't stand marmalades that has more jelly than peel. This has a good ratio. That looks mighty powerful already. All you have to do now is to enjoy it with some bread. I have here a white bloomer slice. I'm going to toast it.
spread a generous amount and take a bite. Oh man, this just kicks you in all the right spots. It is sweet, sour, refreshing with that nice awakened citrus flavor. A great way to start your day. Why did I only toast one bread? Always do two, Avery. Always do more than you think you need. Well, there you have it, pomelo marmalade. As usual guys, it was a pleasure having you with me on this journey today. If you enjoyed what you watched, please leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye for now.